On the 10th of September 2017, G-Money would be seen on Instagram at his usual recording studio working on music, seemingly recording a young boy diss song with lyrics where he says that your favourite rapper is a liar. At around 1.30am, G-Money would be found shot in front of that very recording studio that he recently went live at. Fat Chapo, who was with him at the time of the shooting, said that G-Money was caught off guard by a shooter as he walked out of the studio. I was the first out the door. I'm the one called for help. G walked out that door by itself. I, mean, I told him before he walked out the door, like, he walked out the door on his own. And they start shooting. When they start shooting, I really didn't know what was going on because I really, I heard a, a boom, but the music was playing, so you really, it was kind of muffled. When I first, as soon as the shooting stopped, I ran out the door. Nobody was still, I still never saw nobody. And I saw G laying right there on the ground. And I really ain't, once I seen him, all I could do is call 911. You know, try to get help. Once police arrived, officers would be seen in the dark, taping off the scene and doing forensic work. And G Money would end up leaving the scene in a coroner's van, just like the one that he had showed in his music video industry, where he said that he would put his ops on the news. And the following morning, the news would indeed report on this tragic killing. Baton Rouge police are looking into a deadly shooting that claimed the life of a local rapper. Police say someone shot and killed 22-year-old Garrett Burton on Dallas Street around 1.20 last night. Burton performed under the name G Money. Right now, police have not named any suspects or motive. If you can help police or have any tips, you can report them anonymously to Crime Stoppers. One of G Money's closest friends and fellow TBG affiliated rapper Fredo Bang, in a DJ Small Eyes interview, would recount breaking down in jail when he heard the news of G's death. I just, I just broke down in tears. Like, I, like you know how a baby cry, and um, you know how a baby cry just yell. I, I really just, I, I just sat there and locked up. Scotty Kane would also react to G Money's death, even telling followers that he was getting DMs, telling him that he would be killed next. Man, I wake up to see every day my mother finally got killed in the What the oh like that, son? Then it's sad to say, man, I'm out, not even 25 yet. Like, come on, man, like. It ain't this serious, son. Before I let you take me, dog, I'm slinging this whoever, whatever, and I don't care who love who. I'm going on my move. Get the on my DM, talking about I'm next and all that. Man, I ain't worried about none of that. I ain't, I ain't worried about none of that. Oh, man. When it's my time, it's my time, regardless, but I ain't worried about none of that. Better stop playing with Kill y'all, son. I do not play about my life at all. I'm going to step, yeah. I don't be. You know, yeah, I'm gonna die about it for real, you know. The day after G-Money was killed, it seemed that fans would attend the scene of the murder, filming the location and peculiarly finding a pillow on the ground. The presence of a bloody pillow at the murder scene would end up going viral, sparking a conspiracy theory that G-Money's killers threw a pillow on him after the assassination and told him to go to sleep, with these rumours being further fueled by Youngboy lyrics that came out later, like the song Step On where he says, Lay your bed, I throw the pillow, police after all of my people. And even in his recent single, Bitch Let's Do It, where he rapped that his crew will creep up on their ops and lay their heads on a pillow. With Youngboy even doing an impression of a dying G-Money laying on a pillow in the music video. However, for the record, this is just a conspiracy theory. And some of the more sensible Youngboy fans would work out that this pillow was actually used by emergency medical staff that had attended the scene. But setting aside those rumors, once this went down, all eyes were on the NBA crew. But it would take years before the authorities were able to identify any of the people involved. DeAndre Fields, aka Lil Pap, or NBA Pap, actually the brother of NBA Ben 10, aka Ben Fields, who also got arrested for being in the car with Youngboy in that same incident after Boozilla's death where Youngboy ended up getting the 10 year suspended sentence for. Now, Pap was eventually arrested on second degree murder charges in connection with the murder of G-Money, ultimately being bailed around June 2019. A lot of you are reacting tonight to the arrest of this man, DeAndre Fields, Baton Rouge Police, say they arrested him years after the shooting death of a local rapper, Garrett Burton. Back in 2017, Burton went by the name of G Money. He was found shot to death in the parking lot on Dallas Drive there. 
Police arrested DeAndre Fields for second-degree murder. And initially, Pap would plead not guilty, but some interesting information would eventually be revealed to the police when they interviewed him after the shooting. He actually told police that he had left Baton Rouge with his mother and son, fleeing to nearby New Roads about 40 minutes away from Baton Rouge after G-Money was murdered. As well as this, when asked about his whereabouts on the night of September the 10th, 2017, Lil Pap claimed that he drove to Hammond to get gas. When detectives later obtained his phone records, this claim was proven to be false, as his records revealed that he was actually in Baton Rouge on the night of G-Money's death. But perhaps the most shocking piece of information that Lil Pap shared with the police, which I can imagine was a huge driving force behind his indictment, is the following. After police asked Pap who among his friends would shoot people for the NBA group, he replied, to be honest, me. Now, it's worth adding that in Youngboy's very first album, Life Before Fame, all the way back in 2015, he basically admits that he can call on Pap to carry out what needs to be carried out in the streets on two occasions. Firstly, in the song NBA, and secondly, in the song I Know. Ultimately, Pap would end up pleading out on greatly reduced charges of accessory after the fact of murder and ultimately receiving a sentence of five years. Now, interestingly, Pap would go back and forth with the judge during his sentencing, saying that he is taking the deal, but he is 100% innocent. And interestingly, close friend of G-Money, TBG rapper Fredo Bang, would later claim in numerous interviews that he did not believe Pap to be G's killer either. Might be wrong. A man ain't do that. Brown. Do you know the guy that's being charged? You said that you didn't think the guy that they're charging with the murder actually did it. G Money's own mother would also post on social media saying they still haven't found the shooter of her son and they're still looking. Whether or not you believe NBA Pap when he says that he had nothing to do with the incident, what is clear is that the NBA crew, and Youngboy specifically, would have the most to gain from G-Money being no longer. And going forward, Youngboy and other NBA members would reference what happened to G-Money in numerous songs and videos. The month after G-Money's murder, Youngboy dropped his 10th project, Ain't Too Long, on October the 7th, 2017. This included a number of references to the G-Money situation. Firstly, in the murder anthem Red Rum, where Youngboy claims that he just raised the murder rate in his city. And then, in the song Poor One, Youngboy seems to be talking directly to G-Money throughout the song, alluding to the time when they had a friendship that was like a brotherhood before G-Money betrayed Youngboy's trust by sleeping with his sister and boasting about it online. In the same song, and in the same monologue directed at G-Money, Youngboy reveals that G-Money introduced him to them boys who he didn't like for nothing. Them boys most likely being a reference to TPG. Before paying homage to his own fallen friends Boozilla and Lil Dave, Youngboy would seemingly suggest that G-Money had blamed him for drugs that went missing, which caused the tension between Youngboy and his cousin Boozilla. In another song on the project titled War With Us, Youngboy talks about the sorry state of affairs in Baton Rouge, saying that one particular week he saw seven murders and that there is no helping his city. This was a bold lyric that painted a picture of a city completely out of control. The war in the Baton Rouge rap scene had gotten deadly, and now one of the most promising artists in that city was in the grave, with Youngboy free of his main competition going on to dominate the scene, releasing song after song and mixtape after mixtape, telling heartfelt tales of his first-hand experiences surviving in the trenches of Baton Rouge. But the biggest question remained, was Youngboy just a rapper making music about the violent war taking place in his city, or was he really the murder man, running his rap career like a gang kingpin, and using his NBA crew as muscle to stop anyone who dared to get in their way?